All right, y'all, this is Kelly from 20% Glitter, take three, um, because I apparently don't know how to film tutorials. So things you will need for a rose quartz nail are going to be a very pale pink shimmer. Uh, you can see that I've actually already prepped this nail. Uh, the one that I used is a Cheapy Wish Polish. Um, I really love it though, it's got this nice mica shimmer. If anybody knows of a better quality, pink shimmer, let me know. Um, but you want it to be very, very pale. Um, too bright and it's going to look not great. Uh, you will also need a white. I'm using Beetles number 649 today. Just white, nothing special. Uh, although Beetles is nice. Uh, it's usually one coat coverage. And then the other thing that you'll need that you might not have is a very pale pink jelly. If you don't have a pale pink jelly, you can make one. Uh, with find the brightest pink you can and mix it with a lot of clear. I would say maybe like a six to one ratio of clear is probably a good idea uh, for the color that you're looking for. And then you'll also want some leaf. This is copper leaf, but you can also use gold leaf or whatever you want. I think copper looks nice. Gives it kind of a rose gold feel. So, oh, you'll also need two thin detailing brushes. Maybe just one, I don't know, I like having two just in case. Uh, and a mixing palette because you are going to be doing a little bit of mixing. This is just a mirror that I got from the dollar store, um, works great for that. So we have our prepped shimmery pink nail with whatever it is that you have decided to use. And I'm going to take my long skinny brush. And I'm going to put some white on it. Okay. And this is the first time I'm doing this behind a camera. So um, you're just going to kind of draw some thin white lines wherever you feel like you might want them. Oh, sorry, you'll also need acetone um, for this next step. Hopefully, if you're working with gel polish, you have acetone on hand. If not, I don't know what you're doing. Tell me your witchcraft. All right, had to get the acetone. So um, how much acetone you use is really just going to be kind of up to you. My goal, that was a paper towel, I'm just putting down a shop towel here. My goal with quartz and, and stone look nails in general is to be very sort of ethereal looking. Um, so I don't want a lot of solid anything. Um, so I'm actually going to use quite a bit of acetone here. And I'm just going to kind of disperse it like a lot. Um, like I said, I really... I don't want it to look like I drew lines on my quartz. I just want it to sort of look like that cloudy kind of crystalline structure that you see um, in nature. So it should be pretty random. So I'm going to get some more acetone. We're going to do this other line here. Um, the tricky thing with, you know, acetone and, and watercolors in general is it's never super consistent. So you just got to kind of work with it until you get what you want. So um, the idea here is that we are using layers to create the illusion of depth to make it look like a real rock versus just some paint on a nail. Um, so again, I'm just going to kind of make a mess of this really. Um, I don't want to have that cloudy white cover the entire nail because I want some of that shimmery pink to show through. I think it helps build depth a little bit, um, but I want it to be natural looking. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to flip the light on real quick so that you guys can get a better idea. I feel like this, my kitchen light sort of washes it out. So um, you can see I still have just a tiny bit of 
dispersing to do. So I'm just gonna kind of. There we go. All right. Yeah. So we really shouldn't have anything that looks like the original brush marks there. Okay. Light off because I feel like that's blinding. All right. So I've dispersed my white lines. I am not going to cure it. Um, that's kind of one of the keys here is that running over it with a little bit of pink jelly will sort of disperse those lines. But before I do anything else, I'm going to mix up a little bit of a milky white. So I see lots of people asking, where can I buy a milky white gel color? You can make one. It's a secret. The secret is four drops of clear one drop of white and that is that so we'll take my trusty madame glam top coat here and we'll do one two three four and it's probably going to make a whole lot more than i need so i imagine i'll be doing some more rose quartz nails after we get done with this and then we're just going to do one little bitty drop of white. White goes such a long way, you guys. So really, um, not enough is better than too much because once you get past sort of a 50-50 mix, um, then it just goes back to being white and that's not what you want here. So I'm going to kind of mix that around. You know, and honestly, this Beetle's white is so pigmented um, that that is even still too solid for me. So I'm going to add a little bit more top coat here. These are my first Madame Glam polishes. I've got the top coat and the velvet matte, and I really like both of them. Um, the top coat does a really nice job of um, sort of self-leveling without just like running off the nail. So again, I really want this to be a milky white, otherwise it's going to kind of ruin the whole thing. So I put in quite a bit more, I'll find another use for this, or I'll just wipe it off and go to bed, who knows. I'm just kidding, we all know when we start doing nails, we stay up way too late finishing them. Okay, that's better. Um, still looks pretty white on camera, but it is it is fairly clear, and I'm much happier with that. So. That's what we're going to do there. Okay, so I've got my white. Let's move the nail back into focus here. There we go. All right, I'm going to take my pink jelly. And this one is Mac Art from the Crystal Jelly. Man, you guys, I'm really bad at tutorials. Uh, from the Crystal Jelly collection, so it's like the lightest pink. I think it's just called Soft Pink. Um, okay, and I'm going to just put a very light layer. You want to have a light hand to this because you don't want to mess up all of that nice work that you did uh, dispersing those white lines, so you just kind of want to float it over the top. Pretty sure there's some hollow sparkle in here, but it did not come like that. It's just that I make everything hollow, and so it gets into everything. Um, so if you buy nails from me, you're probably going to get some holographic sparkle, whether you ask for it or not. Okay, so now we're going to take our milky white, and in that wet coat of pink jelly, I'm going to take really just, you guys, there is not much on this brush, okay? Just a little teeny tiny bit and I'm going to run it through and then I'm going to wipe my brush off because I don't want to have a bunch of pink going where it's not supposed to. I think the rose quartz is so tricky for people because the, the contrast is so subtle, right? You can't just slap some white and some pink on there and call it a rose quartz because that's just not really how it works in nature. So using this milky white in a coat of wet, soft baby pink really helps soften up that contrast and uh, gives it a little bit of depth. So 
that line was a little bit heavier than I wanted it, so I'm just going to sort of move it around. And now I'm just kind of dragging my brush around um, sort of the same thing that I did when I was dispersing those white lines. Right, because as you drag it, it's really hard to see this on camera, but you will see that the pink sort of piles up, and so you'll get different tones of pink and white um, all through here, and it just gives it a really nice softness and depth, and that is the idea. That's what you want. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, again, I'm going to turn on the light, see if I can't get this true color to come through and I will take a picture of the after so that you guys can see what it really looks like but if you follow my instructions it should get pretty close so you can see just really soft soft contrasts there so I'm pretty happy with that I am going to stick it in the easy bake oven okay we're back so I have this swirly creamy pink sort of situation here, um, but there's still a lot of white white, and I don't really want any white coming through on my rose quartz because that's just not what it looks like to me. So I'm going to put a super, super thin coat of that baby pink right back over it, and by thin, I mean like real thin, y'all. I keep knocking the camera. Sorry if I'm giving you vertigo. Um, you don't have to float this one because there's nothing really to mess up here. So just a little more pink and you can see that kind of takes away the white part of it. Um, everything in my opinion for rose quartz should be shades of pink. It should not be shades of white. So that's, there's still quite a bit of white there. Guys, this is so hard to do with a camera in between me and the nail. I'm just telling you right now. Okay, pretty happy with that. Gonna throw it back in the oven. Be right back. All right, and we're back. And I'm putting, ooh, do you guys hear the train in the background? I literally have a train in my backyard. It should go away shortly. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm putting my pink gloves here because I feel like it adjusts the camera a bit so that you can really see some of these layers and the sparkle. Um, and I'm very happy with the way that this one came out. Uh, quick plot twist. I know I said that you need copper foil, which is perfectly fine. So I have a little guy here. Um, foil is one of those things that uh, less is more. So, you know, just need a little guy. I'm actually going to use something different. Um, I have this fine copper flake from Advanced Metallics. Um, yes, they gave it for, to me. No, I did not pay for it. No, it was not so that I could do a promotional video. I promise. I just happened to really like it. Um, it was because I offered to do some nail um, art for their photography. So anyway, this stuff is really cool. Apparently it's for resin art, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, but basically it's just like actual metal glitter, which is kind of amazing. So what I found so far about using metal glitter and and really this works with the gold flake too is that a, a nice soft coat of clear will help you move it around a little bit on the nail because i find if you just put flakes um gold leaf or whatever in the sticky layer it kind of i don't know it's i just don't like the way it moves um so i'm just gonna take a little bit of these guys and again, less is more when you're adding your sort of metallic accents to rose gold. I'm still perfecting the art of intentionally making things look random. Um, but I will say that rose quartz typically has a vein of something gold in there. Um, so it's probably a good idea to try to sort of follow a little bit of a vein there. Um, Aren't these shapes pretty though? So the cool stuff about this glitter is that it uh, sinks to the very bottom of your top coat layer that you put it in. Um, so it like stays put and it's sort of instant encapsulation, which is really fun because I love encapsulating things, but I hate all the filing. And you'll actually see that this will 
um, <clears throat> just sink right down and make a perfectly smooth surface when we're done. So I'm going to put a couple more on there. I feel like I might be bordering on too much, but it's really fun. It's just so pretty. Alright, this guy over here needs a little bit more. And I feel like I'm going to call that done. What do you guys think? More? Less? I don't know. Totally open to constructive criticism on these, on these flakies because... Um, I love flakies. I just don't always know how to use them. Okay, uh, so let's bake it before those little guys move. Although, like I said, they sort of sink to the bottom, um, so they don't move as fast as I think some other items do. All right, so that's where we're at. And at this point, you can uh, top coat it. You can also, if you want a little bit more of a pink shine to your flakes or foil or whatever it is that you're using, you can throw just the teeniest bit of that pale pink jelly right over the top. Really soft, sort of randomly placed. Um, and that'll sort of turn that from copper to more of like a rose gold. I like to use a builder gel on all of my nails um, because I am really hard on nails. Um, and so making nails that can withstand like uh, kettlebell workouts and wrestling two-year-olds through diaper changes is kind of my thing now. So I'm going to throw a little bit of builder gel on there. I also think it gives it a very nice depth. Um, turns out that I really like a lot of acrylic designs, but I never learned how to use acrylic. I taught myself how to use gel. Um, plus I do these in my house, so I can't really have stinky monomer happening all the time. Um, so I'm going to bake it again and you guys at this point it's pretty much done so I think I'm going to call this tutorial done and then you know what to do after you throw reinforcement gel or builder gel or whatever it is on there. Um, hope this was helpful. Hope that you find some fun ways to spin it and make it your own and um, maybe give me a follow on my Instagram. I only have like 400 followers and I could really use a little bit more visibility so it's uh, instagram.com 20% glitter. Have a good night.